Today we've got no jokes, no little skits about transitions, we're just going to go sim- Not yet! We're simply just going to go into a straight transition. Hello and welcome to the Cycling News Show. Do it then. All right, let's get straight into the news. And today's first story is from Velo Skin. I recently did a unboxing and a review of their uh, products and they decided to write a blog post about it. If you want to check that out, links down in the description. I'll be honest, they could have picked a better picture. The big news of the day is it looks like Elia Viviani is on the move for 2020. According to reports from L'Equipe, he's off to Kofidis next year to replace Nasser Bouani, whose contract comes to an end at the end of 2019. Also mentioned in the deal is Viviani's lieutenant lead-out man Fabio Sabatini. But this ultimately leaves De Coyne Quickstep without an out-and-out -out sprinter for 2020. According to the whispers and the rumours within the pro peloton, it appears that Sam Bennett is going to be making that move and filling that void that Elia Viviani is leaving as he looks to leave Bora Hansgrohe in 2020. Sam Bennett, what is he, fourth, fifth, maybe even sixth favourite when it comes to sprints now in the Bora Hansgrohe team? He's just not getting the chances he needs and I think at De Coyne Quickstep, the fact that Elia Viviani is moving across now is going to allow him to have free reign and to be able to be the out-and-out -out sprinter that he wants to be within the team. Sticking with De Coyne Quickstep now and Le Flamme Rouge 16 took to Twitter today with a quote from Remco Avenepoel, their teen sensation, on his thoughts about riding the worlds this year. Avenepoel said, If I ride worlds, it'll be in the men's elite category. I'm currently able to win races in ME category. So we, De Coyne Quickstep, decided to skip possibility of riding in the under-23 category to respect other under-23 riders who work just as hard as I do. Which is going to leave the door wide open for Tom Pidcock to take his first under-23 world championship on his home roads in Yorkshire. It's a respectful move from Avonapol. Clearly he has the talent to be able to compete with the world's best, no matter what age they are. So it's good for him to actually step up into that category knowing that he could easily win that under 23 category. He could go there with his eyes closed riding a unicycle with one leg and still beat the rest of the riders there. So he might not stand a chance of winning the Worlds this year but I think it's a brave move from him and, uh, and should be well respected. Now talking about young riders making big names for themselves in the pro peloton it appears that Mathieu van der Poel has got Alpacine and Canyon wrapped around his little finger. Race Radio tweeted this out today. Future of Team Katusha in doubt as Alpacine and Canyon want to move their sponsorship Euros to the Corindon Circus team of Mathieu van der Poel. Now MVDP is sponsored by Canyon and it seems that they want to get behind not only him but also his team. And it's a smart move if you ask me. Everyone knows what he's clearly capable of. Similar to when Cavendish burst on the scene and he became synonymous for riding a specialised. I guess Canyon want the same with van der Poel as well. They, they want people to think of their brand when they think of that rider and it's a, it's a it's a smart move but it'll be interesting to see now what the future holds for team Katusha Alpacine will they look for another big sponsor to go alongside the Katusha name or will they just run it as a Katusha sponsored team again now over here in the UK Canyon sponsor one of the biggest teams which is the Canyon DHB powered by Blore Homes team and one of their riders over the weekend had a massive mahoosive crash Check this Instagram post out from Ryan Christiansen. Damn! Who knows how I survived this one. Small grades on my bike and I live to tell the tale. Unfortunately, this guy punctured mid-corner, was a passenger from then on. Happened in a split second and had no way of avoiding it. On to the next race on Wednesday. He's lucky to get away with that with no brakes. There's at least a collarbone or, a, or even a neck getting shattered in that one nine times out of ten. But luckily, Ryan Christiansen got away with it. Stick with Instagram now. And did you see this post from EF Education First and their brand new Cannondale Super 6 Evo? The new Cannondale Road. Hashtag Super 6 Evo. Light, fast and ready to rip at the Tour de France. And did we mention it's under the weight limit with disc brakes? Fire emoji. Yeah, you heard it. A disc bike at 6.66 kilos. That's insane. We're now at the point where a disc brake bike is just as light as a rim brake bike. Moving away from the professional peloton for one moment, check this story out from Road CC. Ride London admits photoshopping picture of black woman. Leading blogger says organizers should be embarrassed of image aimed at highlighting events diversity. Organisers of Ride London have come under criticism after it emerged that a photograph on their website had been photoshopped to include a black woman participating in the event with a leading blogger and cycling author say they should be embarrassed about it. Do you know what? 
I'm not sure if it's for me to say or not. I'll leave that to the comments down below. If you are someone from an ethnic minority who enjoys cycling, do you feel that the picture is offensive? Do you think it's good that they show the diversiveness of the Ride London and shows that it's inclusive to other people? Do you think it'll inspire uh, people of an ethnic and minorities to get on their bike? Will they feel less left out by seeing that? I don't know. Leave your comments down below. Now the other big story from the cycling world today is also YouTube related. The vegan cyclist is back on his bike. I'll be honest, over the past few weeks I've been expecting him to change his Instagram handle to the vegan swimmer because he's just been nowhere near his bike. Obviously he suffered a knee injury and he's been struggling to get back on the bike. However, the day came when he got back on the bike. Two weeks off the bike has made me realize just how much I love riding. I'm stoked to be able to pedal the bike. Social PT has taken me from the dark mind space with no chance of riding to be able to pedal pain free in two weeks. Now I still have a long way to go. Being pain free takes a lot of focus to pedal just right. Engaging my glutes, back and core while riding is pretty new to me. But we are on a path to not only getting back to riding consistently, but being a well balanced human when it comes to fitness. Fuck! It's good to be back on the bike, brah! And now I know that might not seem like a massive story to a lot of people, but over the past few weeks it seems that, that Tyler has been through quite a lot. But Tyler's been through a lot in the past few months with injury, illnesses, massive huge rides like the Dirty Kanza, as well as trying to hold down a regular job and care for his family. So it's nice to see him back to his positive self, optimistic self, and don't forget, this guy's got 100,000 subscribers on YouTube. So there's a lot of people out there who, who, have, who have watched him because of his inspiration and to see him back where he belongs, happy, joyful, inspiring people, it's only a good thing. So hopefully over the next few weeks, we're gonna see him back to full fitness, back out on the bike, posting YouTube videos more often and ultimately inspiring everyone to get back out on their bikes. Right, let's get on to the comments because we haven't done comments in a long time. And Florian wants to change the name of the channel to the C-P-Y-T-A-S, the Chris Pritchard YouTube ad show. Blame Jesper, don't blame me. <laughs> Adam Gris, I know you strongly believe in being transparent with your subscribers, but do you really need to keep your water sample by your side? Oh, oh. Vintage. Kevin Baxter, you're far too kind. Chris, should have got the gig with Ned and Dave M. Just see you there with your knowledge and wit. That's a capital W. Thumbs up, bicycle emoji, stage one, shock over with. We should have a campaign to try and make that happen, just once. Everyone tweet ITV and just say, because I'm sure, right, if you've got enough people to do it, they would say, all right, let's have a look. And then, and then they'd say no, but at least they had a look. Do you know what I'm saying? Thanks, Kevin, I appreciate your support, man. Harvey Young, I don't know if he's laughing with me or at me. This is funny because it's a cheap version of GCN. <laughs> Fonz said this. Do not open a channel if you not have a knowledge of La Cause and their riders. I'll be honest with this one. I'm annoyed that the grammar troll who seems to have been trolling me for not being able to say the word France, um, isn't all over this. I mean, the grammar on that is shocking. Talking of the grammar troll, at least once make a notable mention of Nat Neil Bahane. Thanks in advance. Uh, okay. His teammate is up the road in stage three's break of the day and he's in the peloton. Uh, listen, when he, when he does something within the tour, I'll be the first to mention it, don't you worry. And finally, today's Twitter rant of the day goes to Alex Dowsett and this little thread. These journalists obviously know less than I do. F1 drivers have brakes under their left foot. It's unsafe only if they decide not to use them. Them. Well, the general consensus is they should be banned. Me. Probably the same folk that want us back on steel frames, ankle socks and 32 spoke wheels. Winky kissy heart emoji. Them. Yes. But there's an argument that the brakes are unsafe and Alaphilippe crashed on a TT bike. Me. And Gilbert rode off a cliff last year on his road bike. Brakes are unsafe if you don't use them. The Speedmax brakes are as good as the Ultimate brakes. Prize for the most ludicrous interview question of the day. Chris Froome crashed while riding a TT bike. Do you agree that TT bikes are dangerous and should be banned? My reply. 
ever see anyone crash a road bike? All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, because there is going to be another video tonight. Stage four of the Tour de France news, views, analysis, and previews of the next stage with me, Chris Pritchard. Until then,